Hey guys, it's Aoi again, and welcome back to the Chinese server version of Ensemble Stars. So this is going to be the second part of the tutorial, and I think I'll focus mainly on kind of courses and events in this one. And also because there's a birthday today, I'll talk about some of the birthday things they're doing in this version, which again are a little bit different than what they do in the JP. So because it's Kato's birthday, he gets his little kind of specialized theme. So we get the, the one on the message box and the little chibi down below. And the other thing they do for birthdays in this version, if we go to the map mode, let's wait for that to load up. There we go. Okay, so they all get a cake and their cake kind of corresponds to what unit they're in. So when they had the birthdays for Koka and Adonis for Undead, they had kind of little gravestone crosses and dark roses and everything. And for the Ryusei Tai ones, they had a shooting star and the, the five colors of the unit kind of going down the cake. So I think it changes for every unit. Those are the only ones I've seen so far. I know tomorrow, or I guess probably it will have already passed once this video is up, it is Mitsuru's birthday, so I'm sure rabbits will have a different cake. And I think Ritsu's is on the 22nd, so knights will probably have a different cake too, so I'll have to see what those ones look like. So Kato at the moment has a little cupcake over his head. So if you tap on him, you'll see we get this little happy birthday banner. So the first one is a free gift. And if we tap on that, okay, so we get our gift and it's 10 small jewels. So the free gifts can basically give you anything. It can give you any size of jewels. It can give you Daya. It can give you those golden scouting booklets. And the free gift refreshes every two hours. So you can see the little countdown going down. The other two you have to pay for and they're AP refreshers. So they're mostly useful during events if you run out of AP. But I pretty much stick to the free ones because you can get a lot of good stuff out of it. And it refreshes every two hours so you can get it quite a few times a day. Okay. So that's the birthday feature. So they don't have special birthday scouting like they do on the JP, but I think that might mainly be because there's not a whole lot of cards in the gotcha right now. So I know in, in the JP they implemented that kind of a year after the game started, so that might be coming yet. And I don't think they have the reduced jewels on Idle Road either, but again, that might show up at some point in the future. Okay, so we'll collect those. We'll go back to this screen and okay, so we'll go to the missions tab again we talked about last time. So I'm going to start up a couple of these because I just collected my rewards from the ones that ran out. So we'll start this one, okay, and we'll do the mascot one because I didn't show you guys that last time. Okay, so we'll head back to the map mode. Okay, there we go. So you can see what the mascots look like. So we've got this rabbit. Oh, and these, these are the jewel things I was talking about last time. So you'll see he's giving me the chance to exchange 80 of my small triangle jewels for one large or medium-sized square jewel. So I'm not going to do that because I actually don't have a whole lot of the triangle jewels at the moment, but it's a way to just exchange and get rid of some, some small jewels if you find you're getting too many of them. So we'll head over to the screen. Okay, so we've got a panda, we've got a, a wolf, I think. <laughs> and then the other two must be on the last screen. Okay, so I'll head over to that one. Oh, we got a cat there. I think that's a cat. And there should be one more of them walking around somewhere. Screen, and we got a bear. Okay. And so if I had Kato in one of the missions, he wouldn't be by his cake anymore, but there'd be kind of a little cardboard chibi looking cutout of him there. And you can still collect gifts from them, but as I found out this morning, you can't get the theme from them. So you can't get the theme unless you actually have the boy there without you know, that he's not doing anything else. He's actually standing by the cake. Okay, so that's the birthday thing. And you also get, I think, I'll go to it in the, in the news feed here. Yeah, so you get the sound clip and everything too, like they do in the JP. Okay, so that's just kind of a little aside. What we're mostly going to talk about today is the producer courses. So there is an event going on right now. It's kind of the end of summer sports festival one. And the event is half over today, which means the new courses have unlocked. So I thought I'd go through a course kind of in real time to show you guys what the producer courses look like in this version. So if we take a look at this screen, the three music notes are for the rhythm portion of the course. So we'll get to that in the course. And again, you have the three trophies and you have the kind of special event lessons. So those end up being about the same. If we look at our producer teams, you can actually set up to four different ones. And you can switch between them by tapping on the number on the side and then hitting the red button, which will save that as your main team. 
So I'm going to go to this one that has all five star cards because it'll change what happens during the rhythm portion. So we'll go back. Yep, we got our team. Okay, so that's good. So we'll start it up and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, and when you start the course, you get kind of a little screen just reminding you what you need to do to fulfill all the missions. So if we look at our trophies, the first one is to get 100 red jewels in four turns, or 100 red fragments. The second one is 180 blue fragments, and the last one is to get Mao's Trust to 100%. So those end up being about the same as they are in the JP version. The only one that's a little bit different is there's one that basically is you have to get a perfect on your kind of your live at the end of the course, and I'll talk about that when we get to the ending screen. Okay, and I do have a a live setup right now so I can show you what that looks like. Okay, so we want to go through. And if you tap on the trophies, it shows you your missions again. So we're going to try and do the four turns for 100 red fragments, because I think I can do that pretty easily. So let's go with this one, because Mao is here, so we might get a lesson. Yeah, okay. So these work exactly the same as they do in the JP. We have three of them. Okay, we'll just pick whatever. And again, the rewards you get are pretty much the same. Okay, so we're going to try for the reward, and I'll go to, there he is. Okay, we'll do this again, because we still have Mao there. Okay, two out of three, okay, so we might actually finish this one off and get the Daya for it. Okay. So... So notice my fever bar filled up, but instead of going into fever mode, what this game does is it takes you to the rhythm section. So there is no fever in this game, it just goes to the rhythm portion of it. So we want to do the red fragment one, so we'll pick the red course. And I'm going to try and play through this and hopefully not do too badly. And you'll see, because these are five-star cards I have, instead of just kind of dancing generally, they'll all do their special little dances as I play through this. Okay, so since I got three music notes on that, that means if you look at that kind of opening screen when you start the lesson, it'll show all three of those music notes filled in. And then the way you collect your prizes, so instead of kind of going through the fever courses and getting more jewel fragments for each turn, once you finish this course, depending on how big your combo was, you get prizes just by holding the screen down and they'll all kind of pop out. And the same thing will happen with the daily gem courses, except at that point you get the chance to get more of the, the square medium-sized jewels and the bigger star jewels. Okay, so if you'll see now, my fever bar has gone down to nothing. So that's really the only way to activate fever in this game. So that definitely works a little bit differently. And if you look at the trophies, so you'll see it's completely failed up, so I got my 100 red jewels in time, so I'll get the dia for that. And you'll see the trophies kind of gradually fill up as you keep completing the course mission. So they tell you if you've completed them by the end. Okay, so we'll keep going with now so I see if I can build the trust bar up all the way, which I should be able to. Okay, so three out of three, so I'll get the die for this one. And with the rhythm portion of the game, you only have to play it the first time you do a course. After that, you get the option to skip it. So if you were, you know, wanting to grind for, for jewels or for event points and you didn't want to have to worry about playing it all the time, you just have to do it once and then you can skip it every other time. You still get the prizes, but you don't have to actually play the song. Okay, so I think I'll get him to 100%. I probably won't get all of these because he hasn't activated every time. Okay, and so because there are only 10 lessons instead of 20, you only have kind of one 
live challenger portion of the event. So that's a little bit different too. So lessons, you can grind up your level a little bit faster because they only have half the amount of, of lessons to go through. Where did Mal go? There he is. Okay, so before I finish this, I'm actually going to go to my live before it runs out of time on me. There we go. Okay, so these work pretty much the same way. Like I said last time, the LP bar goes up to 10, so you have a little bit of extra time between lives. But the one thing in this version I really, really like is if you press this yellow button at the top, you can triple your live. So instead of using 3 LP, it's going to use 9 LP. And in this version, instead of pressing the buttons at the bottom of the screen, you have these little sliders which will tell you show you how much of your bar it fills up to to beat him, basically. So you'll see one team will get me 370,000 out of 1,500,000 kind of people. And if I fill it all up, you'll see I have 1,700,000 and some thousand, so I should be able to beat him with 9 LP. So we'll do that. So there, it goes to zero. You can do that all in one turn, and I think that refreshes every three or four hours. Or else you can pay die to do it all the time. Okay, and you see I get triple the amount of points I normally get. So you don't lose anything from doing it this way, but it does save a lot of time that you would normally spend kind of going through the courses looking for lives. Okay, and that'll only happen when you get your challenger to the highest level, so level 30 for the one hour lives. But until you get to that point, sometimes you get multiple lives in a row. So you'll get up to three. So he'll show up, you can beat him once, it'll pop up immediately again. So again, it's just kind of a way of saving time grinding through all the courses to get lives to keep popping up. And since we're on this page, we may as well take a look at the event rewards. So events in this version normally run about seven days instead of 10. So the rewards are adjusted accordingly. You can see the five star points reward is this Tetra for this event. And he's available at 720,000 points. So they're kind of still finding their footing with this. Like I think Kato in the last event was 680,000 or something, but generally I hope this stays around 700,000 because that would pretty much correspond to the, the 1 million or the 1.1 million they have now in the main version. The first couple of events that I played didn't go that well <laughs> because they didn't adjust the points needed from the JP version. So even though events were only a week long, they had the points what they were when they were 10 days. So it was really hard to get the cards, but luckily they changed that, and now everything seems to be running a little more smoothly. And you can see right now I'm at place 10,990, but in this version, I think only the top 10,000 get the four star card. Yes. So right now I'm in kind of the first tier underneath that. I'm not really trying to tier at this point, I'm trying to save my die because there's a lot of events coming up that I want the five star points card. So in case the game does decide to drastically increase the amount of points needed, I want to save my diet just for that. The only event I did tier on in this version was the dual one for the, the four-star Ritsu card, and that actually wasn't nearly as hard as I thought it would be. Okay, so we'll go back and we'll finish off this course now. And I think one more should get Mao to 100%. Yeah, and the trophy will pop up on the screen just to show you, hey, you've completed this goal. So I'm good. Okay, we'll get this to load. Okay, so this part of it works about the same. You can skip through it just like you would in the in the JP. So I'll do that. Okay, so here's that perfect thing I was talking about. And that just basically means that you beat the challenger. I think within three turns you won all of your little matches and you get a perfect. So as long as your your score is about twice as much as their score, you'll get a perfect every time. So those ones are really easy trophy missions to complete if you see them pop up. Okay, so this screen's about the same. Again, you have some of those attribute things that I'll talk about when we do the scouting video, which will probably be the next one, I think. Okay, you get some producer points. We get the fragments to turn into jewels. And in this version, you can also raise your affection level of your characters by using them in lives. So there's a few different ways to raise affection as compared to the main version, where you just kind of have to get those mini events. So it doesn't go up by a lot, but it does increase a little bit. And then that will show you your points, and there we go. So those are the trophies I've earned. So you get 10 die for every one. The only one I didn't get was 180 blue fragments, but I'll do that next time when I do the rhythm section. I'll pick one of the one of the blue kind of windows so that I get more blue fragments out of that. Okay, so that's basically how events run. That's kind of how how they look, and we'll go back to the event just for a second so we can take a look at some of the other rewards. Like I said, it's all pretty much the same. 
You get your sports drinks, your dia, your three star cards, your medium jewels, producer points, backgrounds, stories. Yakisoba, you get some of those attributes, but not a whole lot of them from doing events. And I think this is about it. And those, some of those bottles that are the, the same as the Combeto. And the second tab is, yeah, shows you the ranking. The third tab shows you who's in, who's in first. And the fourth tab in this version is your friends list. So it'll show you where all your friends are and kind of where you stand compared to all of them. So right now I have the third most points out of everyone on my friends list. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to talk about is one of these scrolling banners, if we can find it, this one, the one with the presents on it. So this is something they do, seems to be about once a week. And what it does is if you activate it, this special timer will show up. And for 15 minutes, if you play the daily jewel course, you will get two medium square jewels of the corresponding color when you finish the course. So if you have a lot of AP and you want to grind it all out, you can actually get a lot of basically free jewels that way just by playing the jewel course over and over. So I won't do that right now, but we're going to go into the jewel course and I'll go through. Okay. So we have this one. So there's only one of the daily course available now. I'm not sure if they'll add another one in eventually, but it's kind of the AP is between the ones that are on the JP version. So they might not. Okay. I'm going to go back to my main producing team, the one where I'm trying to level up some of them. Even though some of them are leveled up, but that's okay. And I will show you one last thing in the course, and then that'll probably be it for this video. Okay, so another time-saving thing they have in this version is you can turn the mini events off. So if you've completed them, so you have three out of three on both of them, you can turn them off so they won't pop up while you're playing the course, which again is a nice way to save time because sometimes if you're trying to level up or trying to grind and you have to keep going through the stories, it does take a while. So I'll go through a couple of these and hope that one of them kind of activates some kind of mini event so I can show you what those look like on this version. Yes. Okay. So Caro did. So there's two different kinds of mini events. There's this one, which is the one with the three choices, which will look fairly similar to the JP. But on this one, instead of filling up the heart, it'll just give you, it'll actually up your affection meter or give you some other kind of reward. Okay, so we'll keep going through this and hope someone else gives me something. Okay, so now we're into the fever mode again. So we'll go over here. If we click on this, you'll see the screen will pop up. And then if you look in the very bottom beside the red button, you'll see a skip button. And I didn't talk about before how to do the, the rhythm portion of the game. Basically, if there's a red kind of circle, you press the red button. If there's a yellow one, you press the yellow button. If it's one of those clear ones with a star in it, you press both at the same time. And those are really the only things with the rhythm section. But if we press this little skip button, it'll ask if we want to skip. We say yes. We still get our rewards, but we don't actually have to play it. And you'll see we'll get a couple of medium-sized jewels out of that. Okay. So like I said, I hope someone else gives me an event so we can see what it looks like. If not, that's okay. Um, and you can see just like in the other version, they'll drop jewels sometimes. And this one, they also drop those circular attributes. Sometimes they'll drop blue scouting booklets or even gold scouting booklets, but those ones are pretty rare. I don't see those very often. Okay. So no one else gave me a, a mini event. So the other mini event is just like in the JP, when you would fill up a heart meter, you get that special screen where you get to, <laughs> where you get to touch your boy somewhere. That's actually a separate mini event in this one. So it'll show up. And again, depending on if you touch them in the right spot, you get more affection points. So there's really four or five ways to level up affection in this version compared to the JP that just has the one when you fill up the heart. Okay. And again, you'll see we got some mostly red jewels, but it was a red jewel course. So that makes sense. All those. Mm -hmm. Okay, come on. Okay, so we'll go back to the home screen. So that's basically how events work in this one and how the courses work. So you can see it's a little bit different, but overall your, your kind of goals end up being the same. They just exchange some of the fever goals for 
for the perfect thing at the end. And there's still the luck meter is still there. So again, if you go to that the infirmary room and go through those, then your luck would raise the same way it would in the main version. Let's see what I got for gifts here. Oh yeah, those are the dia from the course we did. So I'll collect those. Okay, so I think that's about it for this video because I think I've been talking for quite a while already. So the next one I'll do is probably going to be after the event because I do have some special things that pop up only when the events are over. So we'll go through scouting in that one and I'll finally get to talk about what those attributes and booklets are for. And then we'll talk about some of the other things that happen after events that are basically, again, extra ways to get jewels. So again, I hope this was informative and that everything <laughs> kind of made sense. I know I, I try and think of everything I need to say, but I'll probably forget some of it at some point. But I will see you guys later. Bye.